We've got just 15 minutes, so I'm going to start talking. We've got a lot to go through. Um, we're going to talk about three things today. Number one is Nightblog Mobile uh, 2.0, which is location-based, uh, browser-based um, application on the phone. Number two is Net Radio Player. And uh, number three is Navi Space. So let's get going. I'm going to just start a little bit about me. Uh, this is uh, I Am Me. Uh, my name is Mandli Kalesi. Uh, I am CEO and founder of this company, Naviblog. Uh, I come from this country, no points for guessing that one. Uh, and I was born somewhere around here, uh, which is uh, actually London. And then I moved to this place, which is called Japan. And I live somewhere around here uh, in Tokyo, more specifically around here uh, near Ebisu Station. So uh, what do we do? Well, we do things like this. Uh, we do mobile phones. We offer mobile phone browser-based uh, B2B LBS delivery platforms. What do we do? We use user-generated content, number one. And number two, we have original content. We blend the two together. We mix in communities for good measure. And you get your Naviblog ASP model. So why are we doing this? Uh, we are a startup. We started up last year. Uh, well, uh, this was one day three years ago, and we were uh, kind of around about here, and we were looking for this, turtle soup. Now, I don't know how many people were looking around for turtle soup, but that was the day, and we had to find it. So we thought, okay, keyword search. So we take out our phone, and we try keyword search. Well, yeah, that didn't really work. It was slow. We couldn't find what we needed to find. So we said, OK, number two, what are we going to do? We're going to do a tree or directory searches, which is also really uh, cool. So we tried that. Tree directory searches are kind of, well, slow. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and complicated. So we weren't very happy. So we nearly trashed our phones. So we thought, oh, OK, wait, we've got downloadable apps. So we downloaded a couple. We've got a couple downloadable apps. Again, slow. What that didn't work, didn't work. So we said, OK, and they're complicated, and you get errors like this. And they're read-only, so you can't upload stuff, so it's only one way. Uh, porting to different handsets costs a lot of money. Every single environment needs its own development costs. So we weren't very happy, as in really not happy. <laughs> So just to summarize, uh, the current setup is really slow. You get a lot of errors. It's only one way. It costs a lot of money to port. Uh, so that makes people really unhappy. And it makes other people really unhappy with the result. So forget about it. So to summarize, uh, forget about keyword search. Uh, forget about directories. Forget about download apps. But we still needed that turtle soup. So if we're looking for stuff, what do we do? We need this, a map of Japan. But we need to read and write information. And we don't want to download or install anything because of what we just said. So you need this, Naviblog Mobile 2.0, an environment where you can read and write through the browser without downloading anything. So let me show you a quick demo of Naviblog Mobile. The first thing that users see when they go to the Naviblog mobile page on their mobile phone is uh, the legal conditions, privacy policy, pricing information, and so forth. At the bottom of the page, uh, they need to confirm this in order to be taken to a page where they can create an account. On the following page, the account is actually created, so the user picks a name, an avatar, he specifies the categories that he's interested in by default, for example, Chinese restaurants, Japanese food, cafes, movie theater, music-related information, unspecified blogs, um, also enters his name, date of birth, his gender, and sets a password and confirms. The user is then quickly shown again the information that he just entered to make sure he made no mistakes, clicks OK, and the account is created. The system will actually remember the login information, so the user only has to enter his password every 10th visit for security reasons. So the first page he usually sees is a map of his immediate surroundings. Uh, here, defined in a radius of 200 meters, could be specified to be anything else, though. The icons in the map can be navigated with the up-down buttons. Clicking one of these icons takes you to a page that has all the blog entries for that particular location by different people who've actually been there. Uh, you could now add a new comment to an existing 
blog page for a location, enter a title, enter a description, and then you can also upload a picture which could be stored in the data folder on your phone or you could take it in the process and then upload it. If you confirm this, the newly created page will come up that'll have the content that you just added to it including the picture that you just uploaded which can also be viewed at higher resolution in full screen mode. Now so far this system supports text and image upload um, however very soon we'll also be able to provide users with a feature allowing them to upload audio or video which can then be streamed through the platform. So going back to the map, um, the next thing that we're showing you is the scroll shift map feature which actually uh, can be used by pressing the uh, numbers on the keypad. Doing so will shift the map in one of uh, eight directions. If you press the middle button it'll re recalculate and go back to your current position. So in this case it just shifted uh, to the side one step. And uh, that's another example of viewing a, an entry with a, a picture that has been attached to it. So in addition to scrolling um, we also have zoom capability built into the system which allows you to view the map at different resolutions. As you can see, in this case, it'll give you a more detailed view of the map. Obviously, uh, people can also make their own new posts for the location they're currently in in addition to uh, commenting on existing content. So you just pick new post, give it a title, uh, and select the category that the content belongs to. For example, in this case, uh, it's a hotel. Uh, enter a short description. Uh, again, as shown before, you can also upload pictures with it corresponding to that location. Confirm the entry and it goes live immediately and can be viewed by anybody else that's using the system. Now as we showed you in the beginning the users uh, create their account and pick specific categories that they're interested in as in showing up by default whenever they access the system. So these can be changed at any point so if you want to pick all or deselect all uh, you may want to pick just Japanese restaurants, Korean food, um, cafes, uh, places to have a beer, and uh, you confirm this and they'll be saved as the default search preferences and the map will be modified accordingly. You can see a little cafe icon in the lower corner there that wasn't there before. Okay, so that just gave you a quick idea of our Naviblog mobile beta, which is right now in beta, and it will be available commercially uh, next month in August. So, uh, we have set up an ASP model using this, and we are actually already prototyping it in a number of locations. We are working currently with uh, China Unicom in China to offer a Naviblog China version, and uh, two people of our team are already over there in Beijing right now working on it. In Japan, we are working with uh, content holders and network operators. In this case, this is Hakone Navi, which is a project for Odaki Railways that also has a lot of tourist uh, type information. This is a prototype for Odaki Tourism, so they have a lot of original content that they want to uh, show easily on the mobile phone and on the PC using the same uh, user experience. So we offer the original content as uh, icons. On, uh, this one is actually using uh, Google Maps, but uh, our solution is adaptable to uh, any type of maps. And so users can freely comment uh, on other locations, and these contents are available on both the PC and the mobile platform. Number two, uh, this is more like a B2G, if you will. Uh, this is a project we're working with Entity Docomo on, 
Uh, it's a town called Takayamashi in uh, Gifu Prefecture. Apparently, it's very nice. Haven't been there yet. But uh, they wanted the same kind of setup, but this is more like a, a social service kind of setup. Uh, they have a lot of uh, information for overseas, in, overseas visitors and for disabled uh, visitors, uh, along with the same uh, type of uh, information for outside visitors, such as uh, there's, this is a nice place to see Sakura, uh, etc. And people can blog on those locations. They can add pictures, etc. And they can add uh, blogs at new locations that are not present in the environment. So these are two examples of a content holder and a network operator that we're working with to deploy our platform with. 